Hi, my name is Erin O'Reilly and this is my first submission for the Associate Trainer Program. As I'm sure some of you may be able to tell from the background, I'm fortunate enough to be in California at Art to Ride right now in a working student position and have been for a little bit over a month. It's been a great experience so far and I've been learning a lot. On this day, I was working with Zoolander, who some of you may know from following the channel. For those of you who aren't familiar with him, he had a bit of a rough start in that he went through numerous trainers who didn't really understand him. He was in a lot of pain and discomfort from a poor fitting saddle and poor care of his feet and a few other things. So because of this, he learned to explode to try to get away from that pain. And that behavior was reinforced by people putting him away when he would act up. Eventually he was deemed as too dangerous to handle and was almost euthanized, but thankfully he ended up at Art to Ride instead and they've done a great job bringing him around and now he's really a pleasure to work with. Uh, most days he's very relaxed about his work, however as you can see this day he did start a little bit fresh. The temperature had dropped 30 degrees from the beginning of the week and he had had the day before off so I did have to work through a bit of that but you'll see that he does get um, to a nice place at, by the end of the session which is the main thing. So here I'm just looking for him to start to, to step out on the lunge line, start to move into that stretch and start to release some of the tension that he started with and he's moving out into the stretch uh, fairly well at times but I would like to see that it's a little bit more consistent and that he's uh, he's letting go and relaxing a little bit more here because he even though he is stretching he's not really relaxing fully at this point um, so I'm just looking for him to get into the zone a little bit more before I get on him. On a day like today, I knew that the riding portion of our session would go a lot better if he um, just started to, to get into the zone a little bit more. So basically, I'm just encouraging him to step out around the circle, uh, to step in under himself with his, his inside um, hind, and to start to create that stretch from the back end and to start to keep that stretch so I'm just taking a little bit more contact when he comes up sending him out around the circle sending him forward from behind and encouraging that energy to flow all the way through his body um, to get him down into a consistent stretch um, so that trot right there is is uh, what pretty much what I'm looking for he's stretching all the way down to the ground you can see his nose is even getting into the sand a little bit um, but it's not really consistent all the way around the circle quite yet, so that's just what I'm working to find, is more of that. Uh, so when I asked him to canter a little bit, he had just come up out of the stretch, and uh, something with this horse is that he really does need to be over his back on the lunge line to uh, have a nice canter transition without any of those fireworks. So I just brought him back to a trot and asked him there again to make that correction and he came into um, a nicer canter. It's not the best canter that he he can do but um, it was a better transition and he uh, there was no resistance there from him so I just let him canter for a second and then brought him back to a trot um, and you can see here that it did improve the trot a little bit. So he's starting to step a little bit more actively forward. He's a little bit more consistent in the stretch. Um, that let the last going off there. And so I moved him back into the canner to look for a little bit more quality in the canner this time, which he's starting to find. So you can see here that he's stretching in the canner. He's still stepping out around the circle, um, that he's his canter is starting to smooth out a little bit more and uh, he's starting to poke his nose out in the stretch in the canter. So that was about what I was looking for there at that point. So again, just brought him back down to the trot and again, his trot is further improved. So I really like here how he's starting to stretch out from the base of his neck, um, that the stretch is getting a little bit more consistent. You can see that he's getting a little bit more focus 
and that he's starting to have moments where he's really lifting in the trot instead of just rushing forward. Still not quite as good as he he uh, would be at at this point on a different day and also that I know that he can get to on this day but it's starting to get there. Right there. Where he's just really reaching right like that that's what I'm looking for so just looking to create that consistency there with that and the relaxation so that he lets go of all the tension that he started out with on this day so just like that so you can see there he started to come up a little bit but when I took a little bit more contact and sent him into it he responded a little bit better this time instead of getting tense about it he just went right back down into that stretch so that was a telltale sign for me that he was really starting to get to a place in this direction um, that I was happy with because up until this point when I try to to send him forward and send him into the contact he would resist it but um, at that moment there he instead responded correctly by going back down into the stretch and now you can see that he's a lot more consistent. He's stepping more actively forward. Uh, I'd like to see the trot get a little slower and deeper. But that canter transition again was better than um, what we had in the beginning. And the canter is looking a little bit better here too. He's a little bit more relaxed in the canter. He's not getting tense about it anymore. He's starting to slow a little bit and stretch a little bit deeper in the canter just like that. So that was about where I wanted to see the canner in this direction. So again, just brought him back down to the trot and right back into the stretch there. Where he's quite a bit more relaxed now. He's starting to get in the zone in this direction a bit more. A lot more actually than what we started out as. And then again, starting to see the trot slow and, and uh, step a little bit deeper in under himself. So that was about where I wanted him to get to in that direction. And so I switched him over into the new direction. And he's just a little bit, had a little bit more playfulness in him here when I sent him out in this direction. So no big deal. I don't want to make a big deal out of that at all. I'm just going to bring him back to the trot. So you can see how I kept him on a bit of a smaller circle to do that. And to get him stepping out and away from me. Again, creating that stretch from the back end. And getting him right back into uh, a, a good uh, mind space here. Instead of just running around. Because we don't want to to let him run around on the lunge line we're looking for him to start to, to relax so and then you can see here that he's already starting to get to a, a fairly nice place so I like that he's really stretching all the way down really fully moving over his back but what I would like to see is that the trot again slows and gets a little bit deeper because he's just a little bit rushing here so I'm just looking to create some consistency in that stretch and just letting him get slower and deeper in the trot. Create a little bit more lift in his trot instead of he's moving a little bit flat there in the beginning and just rushing. So instead I'm looking to him to take slower, bigger steps, still keeping that stretch. Just to, And that's a, another telltale sign that the tension in him is starting to release there so you can see there that's a little bit slower but it's a little bit more quality in the trot before he had that little spook there but again not making a big deal out of that at all just bringing him back to a trot and encouraging him to find that that relaxation in the trot there just like that so you can see when he does uh, move into that deeper stretch. His trot does get a little bit slower and deeper. And he gets he's starting to get to a nicer place here. So I'm just going to ask him uh, for a canter in that direction. And you can see that I waited there until he, he was moving in a nice place where he was over his back to ask. So the transition happened a lot nicer in this direction from the beginning. And he started to have a little bit more quality in his canter from the beginning compared to the other direction. So I'll just let him back to come back to the trot to reward him for that.
And then another kind of this kind of transition actually didn't happen quite as nice as the first one. There's a little bit more resistance there. So I'm just going to try that again because I knew that he was at a point where uh, he could do that a little bit nicer. So brought him back to a, a good trot here where he's again stretching all the way down just like that. That moment there where he poked out with his nose a little bit more is, is what I'm looking for. Getting a little bit more lift in the trot again. And you can see that the consistency is getting better in this direction as well. So again, another tough hill sign that he's he's starting to get in the zone, that he's starting to release all that tension, and that he's starting to uh, to accept the work and get a little bit more focused on his job rather than what's going on out around the arena. And that's nice there. So he's starting to really really reach over his back, reach over and down and into the bridle. And there, that counter transition happened a lot nicer because again, he was in a good trot. So we always want to try to ask him to move into the canter from a, a good quality trot. And so that, I was very happy with that canter transition. So I short canter for him there because he did it well and then right back into the trot. And again, you can see how much better this trot has gotten from the beginning of the lunge session and the beginning of, of this direction. Um, so that's what I was always looking for on the lunge line was for him to, to let go of, of the tension that he started with and to start to really reach over his back and to, to get in the zone a little bit more so that I knew that when I got on him, he would be in a place where he was ready to, to focus on, on his job and to work instead of worried about what's going on outside the arena, which he, he still is. He's a little bit of a worrier, so we have to try to really keep his focus in the ride. But he's in a, a place where you can really do that now because you can get him into the stretch fairly easy. So um, right here, I'm just starting in a stretch in the walk, which is where we always start with him and with all horses. So you can see here that he's uh, he's moving fairly well in the stretch right from the beginning. I'd like to see him poke out with his nose just a little bit more. At times he's he's curling curling up. Um, so I'm just working to get him off my inside leg to create the stretch where he's really going to reach out and down and into the bridle. And so coming up here now in a minute, you can see that uh, he did something caught his eye outside the arena. That he's not too fine that the water towers were about to pass by. And he does have a little bit of a moment here, but we just, there he goes. A little bit of a spook, but again, we're just not going to make a big deal out of that. I'm just going to bring him back to a trot. And ideally, I would like to see a little bit more relaxation in the walk, and I'd like generally do the walk in both directions when I ride him first in a stretch and get him moving there before I move him up to the trot. But on this day, I decided just to put him into a trot and get him working there because I, I knew that if I had to try to force him to stay in the walk after that spook, it would have just created more tension, uh, which is never the goal. The goal is always to, to get the relaxation in the horse and get them working in, in a relaxed um state of mind and uh, on this day it just made more sense to move him off into the trot so uh, on a normal day I would have liked to um, do a little bit more work in the walk but it just was best for him on this day to move him into the trot so you can see here that I'm just really moving him off my inside aids encouraging him to to step in under himself and to move out off of my inside aids to create that stretch. So in the beginning, you can see that there's a bit of tension in his trot here. Um, so I'm just really looking for him to take that stretch all the way down and poke out with his nose because he is coming behind a little bit there in the stretch. Um, so I'm just looking for him to poke his nose out and again, just, just start to, uh, to move freely through his back um, instead of getting the little bit of resistance that you're seeing here with him uh, just curling up. Still not completely focused here in the trot, so that's the main goal is just to start to get him relaxed. So when he starts to come up, all I'm doing is, is riding him forward, 
following him up with my hands. You can see that I'm having to bring my hands up quite a bit to keep the bit in the corner of his mouth at times. But then he's responding very well to that. So right there you've seen that he just took that contact down um, and started to poke out with his nose a little bit more. And you can see that he's there, right there is where I'm looking for him to be, where he really stretched all the way down to the ground. So that was a good moment there. So just looking for, again, consistency in that. And you can see that the trot is starting to get a little bit slower. He's starting to, to get slower and deeper in his trot instead of running forward. So I'm quite happy with that. And again, just working with him nice and patiently to, uh, to keep that fine consistency in that. So you can see I'm just following up when he starts to come up, moving him off my inside leg, and just continuously looking for him to really accept that full stretch and fully move over his back. And as I'm doing that, I'm just moving my circle down the ring, keeping him focused. Sometimes the, the far end of the arena right there like that. That's what I'm looking for. But sometimes the far end of the arena is um, a little bit more intimidating for him. So I'm just doing one step at a time, keeping the energy flowing forward, asking for a little bit of lengthening along the diagonal there into the new direction, really keeping the focus, getting the, the push from the back end to create that stretch all the way over and down over his back. So keeping things nice and simple for him here at this point, not asking too, too much of him until he starts to focus a little bit better and starts to uh, really get into the zone a little bit more. But you're starting to see here. So every time that he really pokes out with his, no with his nose and uh, accepts the full length of that stretch, I'm just quieting my aids and encouraging him there by just kind of stopping asking him for very much just to reward him and let him know that, that that's what I'm looking for. And then when he doesn't, when he starts to resist it, I'm just following him up with my contact, asking him to, to step off my inside aids to create, uh, the, put him back in, into that stretch. And you can see here that already he's a lot more relaxed than he was when I first got on. He's kind of letting go of all that tension. He could be a little bit more active at times, but again, my goal here at this point is really just to get him to fully let go of the tension and to, to take the full length of, this, of the stretch. But he's doing that fairly well now, so he's starting to, to really focus and, and getting a lot more uh, relaxed, and you can see that the stretch is coming a lot more consistently. So I was quite happy with, with that work there uh, in the trot in both directions for the beginning. And so I'm going to take him on to a circle and I'm going to start to develop the working trot because he is at a point here where he, um, he can come up into the working trot without dropping through his back. So I've been looking for the trot to not change. I'm just shortening my reins enough that he's still able to stay over his back. And you've seen a little bit of resistance there in the beginning, but now he's coming into a working trot fairly nicely. Doing a little bit of sitting trot here. He's also at the point where, where he can maintain the working gates with uh, me in the sitting trot without hollowing. But I don't want to do too, too much of that because there is still a little bit of resistance there. So I'm just going to move him off into the canter here now with this horse. That The canter often really helps him to uh, to start to, to relax um, and to start to let go of the tension and move a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to ask him for a stretch in the canter here to encourage that. And he's, he is starting to, to stretch um, over and down, but you can see that he is curling behind in the canter here a little bit. So I'm just trying to send him over off my inside aids, really letting go with my contact to encourage him to poke out with his nose. And we're getting moments of that here. So again, bringing him up into the working canter. And you can see that he uh, has more quality in the canter here now. He's, he's relaxing in the, the working canter a little bit better after that stretch. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm pretty happy with this working canter. So I'm going to ask him for a shallow loop here for a little bit of counter canter which is something that uh, that he does struggle with a little bit. It 
sometimes if he's not really relaxed in the canter, um, he, he'll try to, to do a flying change there instead of uh, doing that counter canter. But on this day, he did that really well. So I was really quite happy with that from him because he, he stayed really nice and relaxed and, and didn't try to fight me with that there at all. Um, and he did that, that really nicely. So I'm just going to bring him back to the trot. Um, and encourage him back down into the stretch to reward that. And you can see here that he, he was quite happy to move back into that stretch for me. Um, and this trot is, again, just getting better and better. Um, he is poking out with his nose. He's more consistent in the stretch in the trot here. And we're starting to see a little bit of lift in the trot. So I'm just going to change my direction and encouraging him to stay in that stretch to move off my new inside aids. That's important for him to keep his attention. And I'm really happy with this trot here. So really starting to see him get into the zone and the stretch in the trot. And it's taking a lot more, less effort for me to keep him there. So a lot less corrections, which is great to see. So I'm going to develop the working trot here on the circle. And he did rush a little bit there when I um, I went to to shorten my reins. Um, but I just steadied him back with my seat. We don't want to see the trot change at all. Um, when we develop the working trot, we're just looking for him to bring his pole up for nothing to change. But once I did slow him back down, he, he uh, moved right back into a good rhythm. And so started to uh, move and quite happily here in the working trot so I'm just encouraging asking him to hold that in a little bit of sitting trot not too much which he did quite well and then the canter transition happened a lot nicer in this direction too so I was really quite happy with that and I'm quite happy with this this canter here in the working canter and so I'm just going to do my counter canter through a shallow loop in this direction and again, quite happy with that And on this day. Like I said, sometimes he has a little bit of trouble he, with that and starts to resist. And it's easier for him to do a flying change there, of course. But he didn't do that today. And I attribute that to the fact uh, that I did stretch him in the canner first. Because the first working canner that we had was a little bit too tense, I think, to attempt that with. And so here I'm just bringing him back to a stretch in the canter. And this is happening a lot nicer than the stretch in the other direction. He's really poking uh, out with his nose and really pushing down into my contact. So I didn't ask him for too much of that because that was a really nice stretch uh, in the canter for him. Um, so I just brought him right back to a trot. And you can see here that he came back into a, a really nice stretch in the trot. Uh, he's nice and consistent. He's pushing down and into my contact. And he's um, stepping off my inside aids and starting to get a little bit of lift there off my inside leg. So I'm pretty happy with, with this trot here. Right there. Right before he started to come up a little bit. It was really nice those last few steps. So that's about where I'm looking for him to be at this point. So again, just correcting it when he comes up. and placing him back down into that stretch. Looking for the activity from the back end and the energy to flow right up and over, up through his back and down and into the contact in the front end. So that was happening fairly nicely. So I'd like to see that same level of, of relaxation, of push from up through his back happening in the sitting trot here. So I'm just searching from that. And right there where he started to accept that contact was was pretty good. He was a little bit more resistant when I sit, but not bad. He's definitely at the level that he can, can carry me in the sitting trot. And he's showing that here now because where he's pushing out and really stretching deep into my hands while I'm sitting. So just looking to create some lift off my inside leg here and for him to push, really push up into my seat. And he started to show that there. So again, not looking for a whole lot of sitting trot here with him at this point. But that was a, a, a good amount there. So just back into the rising trot. And you've just seen a little bit of mis miscommunication between us there. I 
he wasn't quite sure whether we were circling or going large, but no big deal. Just brought him back out into the track. And asking him for a little bit of lengthening across the diagonal here, which he did quite nicely, especially considering that we're at the end of the ride and he's starting to get a little bit tired. But just asked him for that to create a little bit more activity from the back end, just looking to create a little bit more step there, which he responded really well to. So I'm just finishing up here by stretching him in the trot one more time. And you can see that even on a bad day for him, he was able to come out. He was able to stretch and get over his back and relax and focus on his work. So I'm quite happy with that and happy to finish up the ride there.